Virtual Tourism Hello, my name is Graham Stanley and this video is a short virtual presentation about a course for third-year undergraduate students of tourism studying at Turismo San Ignasi, Universidad Ramon Llull in Barcelona, Spain. Before I speak about the workshop, I'd like to say a little bit more about myself. I'm principally a teacher of English, but I'm also involved in Second Life as a project manager of the British Council's Learn English Second Life for Teens, a 3D virtual self-access centre for teenage students of English using the virtual world of Second Life. Another project I'm involved with in Second Life is the European Union-funded Avalon project. This is a joint project being coordinated by the University of Manchester in the UK and involving a number of different partners and associates, including the British Council, the Universities of Pisa, Vienna, Molde and the Mid-Sweden University, Talk Academy, the Lancelot School and other partners and associates from different parts of Europe. The Virtual Tourism Course The course itself is one of the three English workshops which Turismo San Ignasi's undergraduate students take as part of the first semester of the third year of their degree. The workshops involve students in CLIL, Content and Language Integrated Learning, and emphasis is placed on the ability of participants to use English as a working language to accomplish tasks and learn more about real-life case studies in the tourism sector. The Virtual Tourism Workshop asks students to examine the increasingly popular emerging technology of virtual worlds and the impact this may have in the tourism sector. Through field trips and attendance at events in the most popular virtual world, Second Life, the students experience for themselves what it is like to be a tourist in a virtual world and can also see how real-life tourism organisations are using Second Life for market research, promotional and other reasons. Breaking New Ground I believe that this course is the first of its kind, although a number of other university schools of tourism are currently or about to teach or involve students in similar courses. These include the International Hotel Management Institute in Switzerland and the Hong Kong Polytechnic University School of Hotel and Tourism Management. More will surely follow. Tourism aside, at the moment there are over 200 educational organisations worldwide using Second Life on more than 1,200 virtual islands. The international analysts Gartner predict that 80% of active internet users will have an avatar or a presence in a virtual environment like Second Life by the end of 2011, supporting the students. The virtual tourism workshop was a blended learning course. Students were asked to undertake a series of exploratory tasks which focus upon a self-directed approach to learning. They then post their reflections on forums on a website specially set up for the course which utilizes a Moodle virtual learning environment. The students were asked to access Second Life either from home or using computers in the self-access center at the university, the CDT. The course tutor was also on hand twice a week to help them out with any technical difficulties or other doubts or questions they might have had. The student experience. Rather than summarise the students, I have decided to let them speak for themselves in order to tell you what they learned during the workshop and how they thought about being asked to use Second Life. Um, did you enjoy your time in Second Life or not? Yes, I like yeah. it very much. I think that it's a very interesting activity. What did you think of Second Life? It's a new experience, it's different. You can discover the world from your house? In the f first of all, it was very difficult, but it's very easy to know how to use it. I think it's a, it's a real different program, a programmatic program, to, and you'll discover lots of, of things that being in a real world you cannot uh, see or... I think that it's good for the companies, mm -hmm. like hotels to create a virtual hotel in the net and the people can see the hotel and if you're planning to go to Praga and you see that hotel in Praga and you can visit, you say, yeah, it's very well. I will visit the real one. And what did you like the most? Maybe staying in class always is the same, but you can stay in your home and you can go through Second Life. When I, I was doing the activities and answering the questions, Maybe I start talking with someone in the chat and I start talking about the question that I have to answer and after that I start talking about like what are you doing here? I'm working in a, in, I don't know, the activity of a class and compare opinions with these people and it was different, I like it.
the possibilities, the, the different uses you can, you as an enterprise or as a user, a client, can, can, can check many benefits of the personal life. I find they are using more in a promotional way than in a research, in a market research way, which I think is the, the key of virtual tourism. Given information and receiving information, and most companies, uh, travel agencies, uh, governments are giving information more than trying to, to get information about the customers, the, the, what they do, what, what they need, what they want. I can see a lot of different cultures and imagine how it's going to be the city and if you want to travel to somewhere you can go there and have a little, I don't know, know how it's going to be your travel and the culture. I think that it's a very good um, way to promote tourism because people can, can go to virtual tourism and look for countries and places that you, you don't know. Thanks for this program. I, I will go to places that I've never mm, thought about it. So I think that it's another way to promote uh, countries that they don't have a lot of information about or, or a lot of money to promote it by themselves. The best place for me was Morocco yeah. and also um, the Louvre Museum. The first one because Morocco it's one place that I want to go and I, I only saw it in pictures and when I was there, I don't know, it was a, a strange feeling because I know the, there were a lot of people, a lot of, the environment was so cool and then it was a lot of colors and, and spices and I don't know, the music was really nice. I don't know, I, the first impression was, was very good. And, and the Louvre Museum was the first museum that I so that I saw in virtual and it was, you know, a different way to, to see a, a museum mm -hmm. with lots like, of pictures, and big, big pictures and you can, you also can fly and see all, all that place and it was, it was amazing. Yeah. I, I speak with a lot of people and I can, and I can ask questions and uh, in the quiz I I am posting the forum that I um, that I found a, a a boy and I ask for the opinion of the quiz and um, he he told me that uh, he likes a lot the quiz and and me. Well, maybe you can enter into this ho into that hotel and see see it as mm, well in three dimensions and you can feel like if you were there. It was good for me to write a lot in English and, yeah, in real English and to put the words there and and see how I, I really write in English. But in that moment I was really like writing what I'm thinking and I think it was a good practice for me to, to write and write and write. Well, I remember I visited uh, Netherlands. I found it that interesting because I have never been there and I would like to. I hope I go. The houses were like little, more little than here, like one or two floors, no more. And I don't know, more, all is more, there is more nature. Uh, all the people go by, run by bicycle and all that kind of stuff that I have the idea it was like that. And when I visited in real life, it was really like that. And, and well, I think that was interesting. I think that Second Life, if you want uh, to meet people and to contact with other, with other, mm, with other persons, it's a good idea. It's good because you can you can talk with with different people of all all different countries around the world, and they give you uh, other points of view, and, and they they can explain to you the best places to go or or the best things that you can do in each place. I I walked uh, near Columbus statue and the Ramblas and, and it was mm, pretty similar the real one the the main attraction. I visited um, Barcelona. Mm -hmm. It was very different, but I like it to walk and compare how is is Barcelona and how is Barcelona in Second Life. So I enjoyed walking through Cuba streets and 
I don't know, I talk with a lot of people in there and ask of Cuba traditions and things and it was interesting to get information of a program and not a website. The atmosphere of the, of the time where Paris became popular, so you, you can see and chat with people about that, about history, which I enjoyed too. We were f flying by, by the island all the time and it, it was very funny. And in the end there were a lot of people, so I can interact with them and I asked if the party was, was okay and people told me that they, it was nice, so I think that was a successful event. It seems like everyone is talking about Second Life. In conclusion, I think you will agree that the experience was generally positive and it opens up new possibilities which our and other university schools of tourism will have to decide whether they want to pursue more fully when running a similar course in the future. What lessons have been learned from running this course? Number one, the technology in the self-access centre was not designed for running 3D virtual worlds. The computers there have the minimum specification required for doing so and a better online experience would result if this technology were upgraded with better graphics cards and more memory. 2. A greater focus should have been placed on events and getting the students to meet and speak to people in real time. Guided tours of areas could be organized and the students themselves could be asked to create an itinerary or record a tour for others to follow. 3. There is also an opportunity here for a school of tourism to make a real mark in the virtual world of Second Life and promote itself as an innovative force. This would involve the university creating a permanent presence in world and using this presence to attract publicity and to establish itself at the forefront of distance learning and tourism. Whatever decisions are taken about research paths to follow, it certainly seems that we are just at the beginning of a new educational journey and a branch of tourism education that could well become more significant in the future. Thank you for listening.